at the top of the page, if you read along with me, it says that a trapezoid is a quadrilateral, so it's four sides with exactly one pair of opposite sides parallel, one and only one. The parallel sides of a trapezoid are called bases. The altitude is a perpendicular segment drawn from the line containing one base to the other base or the opposite side, but it's usually drawn from the vertex. So I want you to think about or try to recall the area formula of a trapezoid given the bases and the height. So let's draw a trapezoid to start, not specifically a right or an isosceles, but you need to draw it so that it has two sides parallel. So I'll say these are my parallel sides. I'll maybe extend this one a bit. So this is base one, base two, and then a height or the altitude we'll draw here is H. Remember, parallelogram has two sets. Both pair of opposite sides are parallel. Well, the trapezoid only has one pair of opposite sides parallel. So if we look at the properties, and then we'll eventually draw the right trapezoid and isosceles trapezoid. So we can put a checkbox all the way across. The bases are parallel, and the legs are not parallel. The legs are the sides or the non-parallel sides of the trapezoid. Legs are congruent. So the legs, again, are those non-parallel sides, and they're only congruent in the isosceles trapezoid. So let's draw the isosceles. When you draw the isosceles, you want to draw it so that these two non-parallel sides are the same length. Angles along a leg are supplementary, so along any leg. So if we go back to the trapezoid up top, it could be this leg, so this side right here, and then the two angles along this leg, so that angle and that angle. Any two angles along a leg are going to be supplementary. Again, think about this as two parallel lines cut by transversal, same side interior are supplementary. So because of those parallel sides, angles along a leg are going to be supplementary in any trapezoid because of the parallel bases. Base angles are congruent. So that's in the isosceles trapezoid, so that means this angle here along the top base, those two angles are congruent and these two angles here along the bottom base are congruent. And diagonals are congruent in the isosceles only, just like you want to think about the isosceles triangle has at least two sides congruent, your isosceles trapezoid has it, your two non-parallel sides congruent, and then we also have the diagonals. Two right angles, that's going to be the right trapezoid. So here's your two right angles. I want you to take a look at the isosceles trapezoid. Within the isosceles trapezoid, we have congruent triangles, just as we had in the parallelogram. So in the rectangle rhombus square, we noted where those congruent triangles were. So take a minute to look at the isosceles trapezoid and tell me uh, how many triangles are congruent, what the congruent pairs are and we'll draw them if you have room in this space below. Okay, so marked and pink are triangles that we know for sure to be congruent, and with further investigation, we'll come back to decide whether some other triangles are congruent. So let's look at example number one. We have a trapezoid with CD parallel to FE, so that should help us label the triangle. So let's put on our vertices. CD is parallel to FE, and it's CD... E, F. If the measure of angle F and C are in the ratio 1 to 4. So that means F and C respectively would be X and 4X. Those two angles are along a leg or one of the non-parallel sides. And anytime that happens, they are supplementary. So 4X plus X is equal to 180. Once again, because think of the two parallel lines cut by transversal, same side interior. And how many times does 5 go into 180? 36 times. So x is 36, therefore my answer, the measure of angle F is 36 degrees as F was noted with x. The next one, find the value of x so that the trapezoid is isosceles. Well, if I want that trape to be, uh, trapezoid to be isosceles, I want 
the non-parallel sides to be congruent. I want the diagonals to be congruent but I also would want these base angles to be congruent. And since I'm given the algebraic expressions for the base angles, I want those to be congruent, therefore their measures to be equal. 2x squared plus 19 equals 4x squared minus 13. Let's solve for x by factoring. So we want it in standard form. Let's get 0 on one side. Subtract the 2x squared from 4x squared. We get 2x squared. And then subtract the 19 from 13, and we get what? Negative 13, negative 19 is negative. Nope. Oh, do it without a calculator. 3 and 9 is 12. Carry the 1. 32. Solving by factoring, you want to look for a GCF first. There's the greatest common factor for 2 and 32, and that is 2. So once you factor out the 2, you're left with x squared minus 16, which is one of our special cases because there's no x term or middle term. So that always factors with the same two binomials. Your teacher might have called it dots, the difference of two perfect squares. Or the same, it's just the signs are different. One's plus, one's minus. So you look at those factors with just the x, or the variable, and then the roots are going to be, for this factor, negative 4 and 4. The 2 doesn't have an x in there, so x is either equal to a negative 4 or positive 4. Do I have to reject either one of those roots? Go back to your expressions. It's 4, so I square the x, then multiply by 4, subtract 13. I square the x, multiply by 2, add 19. Since I'm squaring, we don't have to reject, and it's plus or minus 4. Number 3, we're given the lengths of JL. JL is a diagonal, and KM, which is a diagonal, find the value of Z so that it's a trapezoid. I want the diagonals to be congruent, so real easy, 5Z plus 3 equals 9Z minus 12. Add the 12 to 3. We get 15. 9 minus 5 is 4. So how many times does 4 go into 15? It doesn't go in evenly. So it goes in, it goes in at least 4 times 3 12. 4 times 4 is 16. So it goes in at least 3 times. 15 minus 12 is 3. So 3 fourths would be 0.75. Number 4. Isosceles trapezoid has base, bases of length 6 and 12 and an altitude of length 4. Find the length CD and EF. Now, if it's isosceles, the non-parallel sides are going to be congruent. So when I find CD, we have EF. So if I can find CD we have EF, or vice versa. Find EF, we have CD. If you draw another altitude here, so this is a right angle. All altitudes are congruent, so this is also 4. So 4, 6, this is a right angle. It's a trapezoid. These are parallel, so this is also going to be 6. We have a rectangle there in the center. What's going to be the two segments of both triangles? Yeah? 3. And then we have a triple, it's the 3, 4, 5. So EF and CD are both 5. I'm going to give you a quick two minutes to look at number 5 with someone close to you. So let's pause, take a look at number 5. We need to find the area, but before we do that, before we pause, can anyone give us the area formula for a trapezoid? Do you remember from middle school the area formula for a trapezoid? Jordan? Something like that. We'll, we'll go back and fill that in. Then anything else? You add, so it's the sum of the bases. So it's half the sum of the bases times the height. So in our uh, problem here, because this segment is both perpendicular to these two sides, they must be parallel. So here's the trapezoid with your two parallel Op uh, opposite sides parallel, and then here's the altitude. So we need the altitude, and it's given that this angle is 45 degrees. How can I find the altitude and the length of the two 
spaces. See. So I'm drawing the altitude there in red. I've created a rectangle on the right side, which is 8. And then we have a 45, 45, 90 right here. And if the hypotenuse is 4 radical 2, what's each leg? 4. So this gives me the two bases of 12 and 8 and an altitude of 4. So 1 half, the sum of 12 and 8 is? So how do half of 4 first, which is 2, and 2 times 20 is? So we have 40, no units, so units squared. All right, number 6. We're given that it's just a trapezoid with sides AB parallel to DC. So parallel lines AB and DC. The length AB is 212 inches. The measure of angle C is 100. The measure of CDB is 46. Find the length DC to the nearest inch. So finding the length of this base. Well, given the two parallel segments, we have a transversal. That diagonal is a transversal. So if this is 46, what's this angle here? 46. What type of trapezoid do we have, even though it didn't state it in the directions? A right trapezoid. So if this is a 90 degree angle, this is also going to be a 90 degree angle. So if that's 46, what's this angle here? Four more would give us 50. 50 plus what? 44. If we want, we can find the other angle as well. And looking at this triangle right here, let me calibrate my board. There's 180 degrees in a triangle. So we have 146. How many more degrees do I need for 180? 34. So again, we want to find DC. Finding a side of a triangle. There's no right angle, which would allow me to use sine, cosine, and tangent. What do we have to use in order to find the side of a triangle with no 90 degree angle? So Katoa would be a trig ratio, which would be for a right triangle. There's no 90 degree angle. So what do we learn that we can use? We don't have a 90 degree angle. We can use two laws, either law of sines or law of cosines. So we're going to pause the video. You guys are going to take a couple minutes to discuss with someone around you. What law are we going to use to find length DC? So we need to use law of sines to find the length DC. Law of sines is the side length over the sine of the angle. And so if I want to find DC, it would be DC over the sine of 34 equal. What I, I don't have currently a side length that's given within the picture, but can you find one of the side lengths in order so question is can you find db then we can use that side length and then the 100 degree angle or can you find cb which side am i going to find first db is right so once i find db how can i find db i have a right angle so right angle means I can use Sokotoa. So take a look at what's given. What would you like to use? And then once we have DB, that would be equal to DB over the sine of 100. So I need to off to the side, and then we'll do this calculation on the calculator. What are we going to use to find DB? And it's your choice because we have two angles. Aaron? Tangent of? Nope. Jordan? Two twelve over, we'll say. Yep, yeah, we can call DB X. But so DB is equal to a product between two twelve and sine one forty four is it gonna be a quotient? Are going to multiply these two, or are we going to end up dividing when we solve for db? 
divide. So it's going to be what divided by what? 212 divided by the sine of 44. Now, I want you to keep that in your calculator, okay? So over here, to solve for DC, I want you to just do all the calculation once in your calculator. To solve for DC, we have to cross multiply. So you're going to take that answer you got for DB. Multiply it by the sine of 34 degrees. And then to solve the final step would be to, once you have that defined DC, divide by the sine of 100. So I want you to keep it all in the calculator because we don't round to the very end. So take this answer for DB, multiply it by the sine of 34, and then take that answer divided by the sine of 100, and what do you get? The exact. So the length of DC, um, DC is approximately 173 inches. Now to finish with the proof, if you're proving just a trapezoid, so you want to show the quadrilateral is a trapezoid, you need to just use the slope formula. However, to show that only one pair of opposite sides are parallel, you calculate the slope of all four sides to show that only one pair of opposite sides have the same slope and therefore only one pair of opposite sides is parallel. To then go from a trapezoid to a right trapezoid, you just have to show, again using slope, so it's pretty easy and short, that one of the angles is a 90 degree angle. To show you have an isosceles trapezoid, once you show that it's a trapezoid, we have to use distance to show, and you want to use the vocabulary, that the non-parallel sides are congruent. So if you want, you can take time to graph, and then we're going to use slope just to, to start by showing that it is a trapezoid. So slope Now, in graphing and looking at, in just the visual alone, I saw that the two bases look to be parallel, but then part B says that I have to show it's isosceles, so I need to show that AD is congruent to CB. So I, that looked off, so I went back and fixed it. So the slope of all four sides, you, can do, you guys can do it on your paper, I'll do it up here on the board. We're going to look at the sides. I like to put those that, I, that are going to come out to be parallel next to each other, so CD and AB. Then I'll do AD and CB. So again, you do it on your paper. I'll do it up here and we'll compare answers. So C to D.
Once you have your calculations, it's always good to verify them with your graph. That's why we do the graph, even though it says it's optional. Because CD and AB have equal slopes, that means CD is parallel to AB. And because these are non-equal slopes, that means AD is not parallel to CB. And since quadrilateral ABCD has, again, only one set of opposite sides parallel, it is a trapezoid. And now to show, so this is what I have so far, CD is parallel to trapezoid. Now to show its isosceles, we're going to use distance. On the non-parallel sides. So AD and BC. So, again, you calculate that on your paper. I'll do it up here. And you don't have to show me what you're subtracting. So, A, D, or D, A. So 1 squared is 1, 7 squared is 49, so we end up with the square root of 50. Negative 5 squared is 25, 5 squared is 25, we end up with square root of 50. So equal lengths means AD is congruent to CB. And since the non-parallel... Sides of trapezoid A, B, C, D are congruent. It is isosceles.